Hello again guys and welcome back to another Big Al Devlin video here at the House of Devlin and today we're just going to be discussing martial arts in general but with a very specific focus um, and that is what is the best martial art. Now we may sort of go off on topic at points um, uh, and discuss different aspects of martial arts and stuff but ultimately by the end of the video I want to have armed you with the sort of ability to analyse a martial art and go with you think personally whether it's good or bad I'll give you my answer right here right now and that is is that all martial arts are equal in many respects okay they all have something to offer and because we're all individuals we all want something different out of what we do okay like for myself I like my martial arts I used to like my martial arts to be um, ones that focused on winning winning ring fights uh, then, of course, I went uh, and wanted to learn self-defense martial arts, ones that are more useful at defending yourself in uh, sort of street fights, if you wish to call them that. Uh, but, you know, defending yourself against strangers in, in all kinds of situations. Um, and then now my focus is going back more into the ring again, um, with my hope, obviously, to uh, hopefully fight in a few professional MMA fights in the near future. Um, but obviously some of you may also have, you know, des uh, sort of desires for your martial arts just to simply keep you fit, to keep you flexible, to keep you mobile, things like this. Um, uh, and there may be other reasons as well why, why you do it. But uh, they're the three main reasons to keep your physicality or to develop an athletic physique and, and you know, and, and, and as I say, almost like a gymnast body, a very flexible body um, to be able to fight in the ring or to be able to defend yourself in the street. And some martial arts, they'll do all of these kind of things to some degree or another, but the mass majority of martial arts specialise in one aspect or another. And if they're very good, for example, at um, ring fighting... Um, developing your ability to fight in the ring. They are also applicable to, obviously, self-defense. They make you better at defending yourself. Um, but at the same time, they um, are not as good at self-defense aspects as a specialized self-defense martial art. And I'll get into that in one minute. And, of course, I suppose the most classic self-defense... Um, martial art, well, well not most classic but the most popular most well known uh, self defence martial art out there is Krav Maga which is a sort of de a martial art developed by the Israeli special forces and has been sort of filtered down into the, into the public over time um, but this is more in my personal opinion a mixed martial art it's a martial art in its own sense in the sense that it's got its kind of its own syllabus if you wish um, uh, not that I would you know <laughs> what makes a martial art it has a syllabus no and then you don't look at that but 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 what I'm trying to say is it, it, it is a singer you know you teach it um, and all these moves together at the same time. But really, in my personal opinion, Krav Maga is really just mixed martial arts. It's, it's where you're learning to fight with a variety of different fighting techniques. Um, that have been pulled from things like boxing, um, uh, kickboxing, um, jiu-jitsu, sorry I do struggle to pronounce that one, you know, some of the more oriental uh, martial arts, like possibly karate and stuff like this, and they kind of put them all together into one package. So it is a martial art, officially, um, and in that case I would actually say my, my answer on what is the best uh, self-defense martial art out there, um, I would have to say Krav Maga has a real, real strong standing, you know, real strong argument saying that that is it's be the, one of the best. Myself, personally, I prefer Pomotron Pankration, which is the martial art that I, one of the martial arts that I know. Um, and it is um, very brutal and it's what a lot of Krav Maga has kind of taken from. Um, uh, I don't know if it's taken directly from it or taken away from it. Uh, some of the martial arts that themselves have taken away from Pomachan Pankratian because Pomachan Pankratian is um, a very, very old martial art. It was developed by the ancient Greeks um, and it was designed to be used on the battlefield. So these are the kind of martial arts that I like. Martial arts that have been designed to be used on the battlefield 
um, to either kill or disable your opponent um, and to also be able to defend yourself potentially against weapons ultimately um, because of course on the battlefield they were, back then they would have had swords, knives, spears or the whole lot sort of thing and the whole idea of Pomachon Pancration was it was a backup um, tool essentially for, for, for Greek warriors Greek hopolites um, that um, if they became disarmed uh, of their sword or the spear, they didn't typically use spears back then, um, uh, but they would add a backup spear or uh, sorry, sword or, or knife. If they've lost all their backup weapons or they just literally have to act in the opportune moment, it just some presents themselves, um, then they would use this martial art that they they all learnt, Pomachon Pancration. And it's designed to basically obliterate your opponent as quickly as possible. There's no bars held, uh, as you can imagine, for martial arts being designed to be used on the battlefield. It's there to gouge eyes out. It's there to uh, to, to to crush the windpipe, um, to strangulate um, and to decimate uh, uh, joints like the knees. So it's a lot of stamp kicks, things like this. Um, so it's there to disable and ultimately then kill your opponent with your bare hands. And it, it, it allows hair pulling, it allows anything, everything and anything you want to do, including headbutts and everything, are, are essentially in theory allowed within the martial art. And of course there are moves that are, and defensive uh, moves also offensive and defensive aspects to the, the martial art that allow you to for example if someone tries to strangle you they grab you around the throat how to get out of that so easily um but pomatron and pancration instead of using the traditional more defensive well where you just push the hands together for example and i'll do a video more on that kind of self-defense they just uh, pomatron and pancration the the approach is and a very offensive one where you go in the inside of the arms of the opponent and uh, of the person who's strangling you and you go straight for their eyes and gouge their eyes out. So, I mean, it's a very, very brutal martial art that you cannot use the majority of in the ring. It's actually too good at self-defense to be used in the ring because the ring, ring, ring sport that's that's what they are they are sports they are a sport where yes you can hurt your opponent but you're not there to permanently hurt your opponent you're there just to knock them out maybe break a nose you know things like this you know but you, you're there ultimately to either win on points or via a knockout um you're not there to win but because you've blinded your opponent <laughs> or something along these lines so or you've you know broken their leg <laughs> which which is, you know, a brutal way of looking at it. But that's why, you know, for a while, I especially, and I still have a significant interest in, in, in these kind of martial arts, um, I have a, a very, you know, very strong interest in, in sort of what I would describe as the self-defense martial arts. And as I say, um, it would either be Krav Maga or it would be Pomatrum and Prankratian, which for me would be the top of that, this particular category. Um, now, the reason why I say these are the top two is Krav Maga is a mixed martial art, so it will allow you to be able to attack and defend in a striking position, so you'll know how to punch, how to kick, and how to defend against punches and kicks, always the most very useful thing to do, have, especially in uh, self-defense, um, but it also involves chokes, holds, throws, and of course a bit of groundwork as, as well, so it involves a little bit of everything, so it's a very balanced martial art and so you'll really have no gaps in your ability to defend yourself if you go up against a judo for, for, for a fighter and they happen to get a hip throw on you and they put you on the ground it doesn't really matter so much because yes the throw will hurt you and yes they're in an advantageous position at this point but you um, have been trained to be able to fight on the ground to fight on your back as well as fight on top of a person on the ground um, so as I say offensive and defensive aspects of groundwork um, and, and so you're not going to be completely completely out of your sort of comfort zone you still got some tricks up your sleeves at this point now obviously when we look at groundwork the best martial arts out there um, for groundwork in my opinion are judo and uh, brazilian jiu jitsu there we go i pronounced it correctly this time um so bjj we're going to call it from now on okay so bjj and um judo these two for, for me are the 
two best martial arts for learning groundwork. Which most people don't know that judo actually includes a lot of groundwork. They think it's mostly throws and they, they kind of mix it up with karate almost. With like, they think there's a lot of striking in that. But in my opinion, ju 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 this is these two martial arts really, really lack in their ability to teach you how to strike. Um, they do not teach you how to strike to the same degree as other mar martial arts that specialize in striking. And so there's a big, massive gap in BJJ and judo, in my opinion. I mean, they, they are amazing up close, as I say, on the ground, but you've got to bring the fight to the ground or into a sort of grapple uh, for you to be able to do any of the moves that essentially you've learned in BJJ or judo that kind of makes you special compared to another person who knows another martial art, for example. Um, and so really we're getting into sort of ring fighting uh, martial arts now, um, of which obviously um, I know quite a lot about. Um, uh, my martial arts, just so you know, Pomachon Prankrashan I've already mentioned, Gleamer. Okay, now Gleamer is another self-defense uh, martial art that I've incorporated into my ring fighting. Gleamer is, um, it, it means flash, also essentially quick, um, in, in the old tongue of uh, the old Nordic tongue. And it's um, the martial art that is used by, uh, w was used by uh, the Vikings, essentially, the Nordic people, the ancient Nordic people. Um, but specifically, the Vikings would have trained in Gleamer. And obviously, you know, the original Gleamer would have taught you how to fight with an axe, a shield. Um, it would have taught you how to... Um, um, how to essentially kill your opponent using weapons and how to defend yourself against weapons but it also did then teach you just like Pomachon Pankratian how to defeat an armed opponent or an unarmed opponent um, after you yourself have lost your weapons because obviously remember ancient warfare weapons broke even in today's modern warfare guns jam things like this you've got to be prepared to be able to fight with your fists and obviously it was more so back then uh, than it is today because the weapons were much shorter ranged even if you had a bow you know the range of a bow compared to a, a proper full grade rifle for a military grade rifle for example it, yeah there's no comparison okay so um so so up close and personal you 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 had to be able to defend yourself with your fists it was it was as simple as that or with, with whatever part of body of your body that the, the, the martial art taught um and gleamer was it, it or it is um it's about to develop you know it's sort of evolved with the time so now it's just more you don't obviously learn accent and, and fighting techniques like this with, with weapons you can but that would be more hema that would be like an historical martial art where you, you actually go to the manuals and learn how to fight with an axe and a shield and things like this but within Gleema, um uh you actually it's all about really kind of getting your opponent down to the ground and the whole purpose of this it makes sense right Get your opponent down to the ground as fast as possible. Hence why it's got the name Flash, Quick, Speed. It's there. It's about taking advantage of your opponent as quickly as possible, bringing them down to the ground so then you can kill them with your IV or backup weapon if you have a dagger or say axe as it would have been for the Vikings or, you know, where you can then get on top of them and, and, and finish them in, in, in other ways. But it's all about disabling your opponent through um, either destruction of the knee joints or by by putting them onto the ground giving you time there in modern times to either um subdue the opponent or to run and get out of there ultimately and so gleamer i find very useful as a self-defense martial art i wouldn't say it's one of the best i say pomachon Krayon is far superior because it does the same sort of stuff um uh, there are it doesn't doesn't do all the same things, but it, it does a lot of the same stuff. Um, but it's more brutal. But it's almost too brutal. I mean, it's like it's so brutal. It's that if you use the moves or all the moves that you've been taught, you're gonna get nicked. You know. So it's nice to obviously you know um, you don't get to use your pomachon prankrashian that 
that much. It's too deadly. Uh, Krav Maga, as I say, is perhaps a better, more balanced, and more sort of um, sort of doable <laughs> martial art in today's society. And Gleamer is a very good one as well, as I say, for putting your opponent down despite any height or weight advantages they may have over you. Although if you're bigger and stronger than them, you got an advantage in Gleamer for sure. Um, but as we were saying, we kind of now looking at the sort of ring based uh, martial arts. So the martial arts that you would do or, or perform in, in in a ring. And we've discussed BJJ and judo. These are good, but they have big gaps. They need to be combined with a striking martial art. Out of the striking martial arts, my my top ones would be Muay Thai. Which is what I'm I'm trained in, and um, that's my my primary martial art, um, and boxing, which is something I've I've also been trained in since I could walk because it runs in the family. My my grandfather was a uh, seeded ninth in the world, believe it or not. So it runs in the family. So I haven't had any formal training from a boxing gym, but I've had training obviously through the family um, in boxing. Um, now. These are my two favourite ones. Um, I wouldn't put kickboxing on there, although it is very, very good at striking. Um, but simply because it relies too much on its points. So when it goes up against in its point system, when, it, when you go up against um, um, an, a, another martial art that's very similar, like Muay Thai, for example, that has a totally different point system, that it's more about just taking your opponent out, then rather than throwing a certain particular kick and landing it in a very specific manner, um, it, 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 it's going to struggle that little bit more um, if they you go in with the mentality that obviously you've been taught. Um, so that's why I would put it in the sort of underneath boxing and um, um, Muay Thai. I think Muay Thai is a superior martial art to kickboxing, even though it's basically the same because Muay Thai is otherwise known as Thai kickboxing. It's a form of kickboxing essentially that just evolved in Thailand rather than in, in, in Europe. Um, and of course you would also have to put into here into the, the one of the top ring fighting um, uh, martial art. Yeah, you'd also have to put into here um, um, Greco-Roman wrestling and other, you know, uh, type of wrestling like 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 that. But I would say Greco-Roman wrestling, um, because these are again very good at getting your opponent down to the ground. So if you were to combine something like Muay Thai or boxing, um, but the one limitation about boxing is that it doesn't have any kicks, and it doesn't have elbows, and it doesn't have knees, and it doesn't have it has a clinch, but it doesn't have a, a clinch that worth talking about really there are there are nuances to the boxing clinch that people don't realize you can actually do a shitload of damage in a boxing clinch but it's it's still inferior to like the clinch that you find in a muay thai clinch for example which is highly feared i mean most people don't want to go into a uh, into a fight with a muay thai fighter and then get stuck in a muay thai clinch because it's designed to to deliver elbows and knees straight to your head whilst keeping the the clinch upright preventing it going to the ground and if it goes to the ground then the Muay Thai fighter essentially has done something wrong because if, if or, or you are very skilled um, um, grappler yourself one of the two um, and so you know you've got to look at the sort of that but the reason why I put boxing at the top is is it's just in my opinion one of the most devastating striking specialized sports out there I mean the mass majority of the time when you look at fights it is a lot of punches and I don't mean fights in the ring necessarily but certainly you know it overlaps well with self-defense um, if you a good boxer you're going to be a good street fighter as well you know you're going to be a good good at protecting yourself against the muggers someone comes up and tries to mug you and you're a top top class boxer that you you're gonna win you know you're gonna win you're gonna defend yourself you're gonna keep your mobile and your wallet and everything okay um it doesn't do particularly well against weapons but you know there you go you, you if someone's got a knife just hand them your wallet fuck it or gun you know just give it to them 
um, in my personal opinion, because it's not worth your guts or your heart or your life, you know, you don't want to get stabbed or shot, okay, um, but otherwise it stands up very well within within a sort of street-like environment um, um, for, for, for defending yourself, because it is very good at taking your opponent out, and kicks are very unreliable in um, a kind of a street fight like environment um, if you're having to defend yourself uh, you know and you want to you're very good at kicking like I am I'm, I'm very good at kicking but do I have I ever thrown a kick when I've had to defend myself um, no I've done it once and once only um, and the reason for this is footwear your footwear is probably going to be inappropriate Secondly, the elements, it's probably, it may have rained, it was slippy ground, and it, you may be on grass, or, you know, if you're on concrete, you know, and you, it, it's just very difficult to throw kick properly, and then, of course, um, with those two aspects, then, of course, your clothing, I wear jeans, you know, when I, when I go out, so there's no flexibility in jeans, I can't throw a kick anyway, you know, low kicks, yes, but, uh, and that, that's, you know, the, the, the kick that I threw the one time I had to, but it, it, it you know, it's, it, you are limited by all these things, and so what I would say is, when you learn your martial arts, the reason why I say the other martial arts that are specialising in self-defence, like Pomachan, Pankratian, and, and, and all that, that don't look at maybe trying to kick your opponent in the head or whatever, but don't look at kicking your own, doing stamps and, uh, 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 and, and joint manipulation attacks against the knees and stuff like this, as well as the shoulder manipulations. But, but, but where you're looking at grappling, essentially, combining with, combining with low kicks and then uh, uh, palmer strikes and stuff then this is far superior because this is something you can use no matter what you're dressed in and, and what, whatever the elements you you can do it without slipping over and hitting your head off the off the curb just because you've tried to throw a roundhouse kick you you didn't realize it was slippy you've slipped over and fallen over and hit your head not the best idea but in the ring, obviously, you've got fighting shorts on. Um, you're in the ring where, where you've got great canvas. So, you know, you don't have to worry about um, slipping over so much. Um, and and obviously, it's all, you know, if you do fall over, you, you're going to be relatively safe, apart from the opponent jumping on top of you and hitting you. Um, but, you know, um, regardless, for the, for, for the ring... Uh, fights. I, I would still include boxing, even though it's you know when we look at it, is it focused? Yeah, it's very focused towards striking, and it's very focused to the ring fighting. Um, but it oh, very much overlaps also with self defense. Um, and that's what gives it that boost, in my opinion. Um, but is it is it balanced? No, not really. No, it's very unbalanced because it doesn't have kicks and it doesn't have groundwork. It does have a clinch, but the whole point about if you're a very good boxer is the one thing that people don't understand if they don't fight, if they don't um, go in the ring often, um, is that punches are, are shorter range than kicks. Now, that gives kicks an advantage when closing the distance, of course. But if the boxer is really good, he's only going to take one kick at most, then he's going to get in. OK, and then if he's up close and personal, you've got no choice. You have to trade punch for punch with him um, and he's going to be better at, the, at punching than you because there's no better puncher than a boxer. OK, um, and, you know, then obviously if a boxer works it round well, they can do a serious, serious amount of damage. OK, um, just by simply limiting you to not being able to kick not been able to do the things you want to do. Now, obviously, you could take it into a clinch if you're good at clinching, but the, the boxer should be able to then back off and keep his distance because boxers are very light-footed. They're the most light-footed out of most of the, the sort of European martial arts, so we say. Um, now, um, <sighs> the... I know I haven't really given you an answer then as to which is the best martial art out there. And as I said, my personal answer, in regards to creating physicality, every martial art does it, 
Okay, everyone is, is very good. Uh, and I know there are some Oriental martial arts that are particularly good at it, um, but but I have no really experience of them. So I'm not going to talk about them, but every martial art is good for your health, good for your fitness, good for your conditioning. Um, but really, I mean, I know some people are going to be putting in the comments some martial arts that they think are are really good and please if i haven't mentioned them or i actually am about to go for the ones that i think are lesser martial arts it's not it's just my opinion it's not fact okay so have a discussion with me don't get pissed off just because i've mentioned something that perhaps is against what you think i, I mean no disrespect whatsoever um uh, in, in the next few minutes martial arts that i don't like well, personally, I don't like BJJ, okay? I respect it, and I'm wary of it, okay? Um, but I don't really like it because I find it very boring. I find it very pernickety. I find it's very technical, and you have to be a bit of a nerd, really, to, to really get into it properly. Um, that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. I'm actually complimenting it. I'm saying it's really good. Um, and there's a lot of depth to it. So, you, you know, so it's great to commit yourself to this martial art for years and years and years because you can still learn stuff within the martial art. It's not, a, it's not a basic martial art by any means. It's very in-depth. But it's just for me, it doesn't fix... F it doesn't fit my mindset and so this is why when you come to argue what you think are the best martial arts out there at maybe striking sorry at ring fighting um and with that within striking and groundwork and grappling for example you could subdivide them and then you look at like self-defense martial arts and you can again subdivide them into different things such as those at which you know um disable your opponent with like joint manipulation and submission techniques others that through striking others through whatever um you're going to obviously get a different answer simply because you've got a different opinion on what you like to see now i have a, a, a passion for striking so hence why my my uh, answers are gonna always gonna be towards things like Muay Thai boxing, as I say. Um, I love joint manipulation, so hence why I like my Pomachon and Krachion and 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 Galima and stuff like this. And, and I like throws, um, but I don't like groundwork. So there you go. Now you can probably see why I've formulated my answers in the way that I have, um, and I know that these work together when you combine these martial arts together they work very well um and i have learned a bit of bjj i've done bjj in the past but only enough to learn how to defend myself really okay so i know what an arm lock is i know how how people slap on ankle locks and triangles and all the rest of it rear, rear neck chokes and all the rest of it but uh, and i have sometimes used I, I use a rear neck choke that's the only sort of submission that i would use um i use it quite a lot in fact um but i don't like to do um any of the others simply because in my opinion um i'm, I'm just not experienced enough at doing it and i'm not flexible enough and there are other ways in which I can take my opponent out. And that, as I say, ground and pound, things like this, and slamming the opponent and just using my physicality. Um, but smaller fighters, definitely I would recommend BJJ and Judo, um, as I say, because they give you um, uh, the ability to, to defend yourself much greater than you than a lot of other martial arts against bigger opponents. So someone, if you go up against someone like me and say you weigh twelve stone, well I've got a six stone advantage on you, and I've also that such that six stone is you know mostly muscle and bone, so it's it's hard. You're not going to really strike me out because your punches, yeah, they might hurt, but then you know I've been hit by little guys before, um, and they don't hurt enough. Let's put it that way. So the only way to bring me down is to put me on the ground. At, on the ground, I'm the same height as you, okay? My body weight means nothing as long as I'm on my back. If I'm on top of you, then there's a, that's a whole different ball game. My weight means a lot. But but if you put me on my back, I've lost my, my physicality advantage, which I will require. I, I do use it. So it's a great martial art, BJJ, um, but it's not for me. Um, the martial arts that I don't really like is... Uh, 
kung fu and a few of the oriental martial arts like that i mean i started off with karate shotgun karate there is value in all these martial arts because they're actually very good at creating the physicality aspects so i would actually start off with one of the oriental martial arts because they do require a lot of flexibility and a lot of you know a lot of conditioning um so I'm not poo-pooing them by any means. I would actually say that Shotokan Karate is not that useful. Um, in fact, I would never go in the ring if I had only learned Shotokan Karate. And yes, I would be able to defend myself better on the streets than the average Joe Gun if I'd learned Shotokan Karate. But I wouldn't necessarily be as good as, you know, I wouldn't be anywhere near as good as what I am at the moment. Um, and so the Oriental martial arts as a whole, for me, are not, as good as the western european ones um but i you know again it's just a matter of opinion you know and it's also remember the martial art is not just the martial art itself it's the martial art plus the person doing the martial art and so if i was to go for example i don't rate kung fu at all okay um if I heard I was going up against a kung fu fighter, great, I've done it before. I have fought a kung fu fighter and I smashed the shit out of them in the ring, right? But if I heard, and so I'd be jumping for joy if I, if I heard that I was going up against a kung fu fighter. But um, if I heard that that kung fu fighter was Bruce Lee, I would be crapping, man. I wouldn't be crapping myself because, you know, at the end of the day, you got to do what you got to do. I'd get in the ring and fight him. But yeah, you'd smash the shit out of me. Okay, using Kung Fu. So you understand my opinion. It's very hard to answer the question, what is the best martial art? But if you're going to go, 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 because, because we're all different, we all want different things out of it and we all have different skill levels and we can all make whatever martial art we pick the very best thing out there if you're just that skillful. Like, as I say, so like someone like Bruce Lee. But um, really, you need to just look at subdivision. What do you want it for? The ring? or the street, and then do you want it to be um, striking, grappling, or, or, or groundwork? Um, in which case, um, striking and grappling, I'd say Muay Thai, because it covers both of them, uh, and it does particularly good in both aspects, um, but it has zero groundwork. Obviously, if you want groundwork, put BJJ with Muay Thai, you've got a perfect balance then. Um, I'm a Muay Thai fighter. I don't, as I say, I know a bit of BJJ, but not, no, no, I don't. But I just refuse to learn groundwork. But there you go. You've got to also understand your own mentality. Sometimes you just don't want to do something. You don't want to add it to your repertoire. You don't think it's that useful to you. Well, I know it would be useful to me, but I'm just not willing to put the time in, into that and, and not into my other striking martial arts that I think are more useful for me as a person. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed the discussion. And please put your, what, your thoughts in, in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to hear them. Um, and if you disagree with me, that's fine. Not a problem. Um, um, this is not an argument. It's a discussion. So please put them in the comments and, and tell me the reasons why you disagree with me. Thank you and uh, goodbye.